Stylescapes are a great way to minimize client provisions and get your work approved faster by your client. How? Let me show you. Today I'm going to talk to you about Stylescapes, what they are, why they matter, how are they different from mood boards, and how do you create one? Essentially, stylescapes are a more detailed and elevated version of a mood board. It's a combination of images, text, patterns, packaging, textures, and other things that will help your clients and you actually get a very good feel of what the brand is going to look like. So unlike a mood board, which tends to be a collection of inspirational photos that reflect the general feel of the brand, a stylescape really focuses on more specific examples. So besides inspirational photos, it could include typography examples, a full proposed color palette, pattern ideas, basically a full creative direction for a branding project. In my case, I tend to present three different stylescapes with different feels, different personalities to my client so that then they can choose the direction we'll pursue and I can then go and design their brand concept based on that direction. So let's jump into Figma and look at an actual stylescape together that I created for a client. All right, so here we are in Figma and I'm gonna show you an example of a real client, Badass Rebellion, and I'll show you these three stylescapes that I created for them, which one they ended up choosing, and then I will also show you how did that translate in the visual identity and website. So here we have a mood board that I created after our strategy call. Basically on that call, we jumped into Pinterest and we just looked at a couple of images and selected a couple of images that my client liked. I wanted to understand what is their vision of their brand if they have one. Clients don't always have one, but in this case, we had some good suggestions. But as you can see from this smooth board, there isn't really one clear direction. There isn't really one creative direction to follow. We, as the designers, can see some patterns, for example, that there is a dominance of sans serif fonts, that uh, there are a lot of different curved lines here and here in the pattern. We can see some hand-drawn elements here. Um, but then when it comes to the colors, it's a little bit all over the place. There's pinks, there's yellows, there's beige, there's blue, and then there's also pastel colors here and here. It's, it's a little bit confusing. And it's very confusing for your client too, because your client is not a designer and most probably they're also not a creative. So it's hard for them based on a mood board like this to really envision what the creative direction of the brand is going to look like. That's where a stylescape really becomes useful because in addition to inspirational images, it also has a full color palette, font suggestions, and other design elements that really create a detailed image, detailed creative direction for the brand. So before we look at the stylescapes I created for the client, let's look at some of the foundations of a stylescape. Typically a stylescape has a horizontal layout. Mine is 5,400 by 1080. It's basically five 1080 by 1080 squares next to each other. But I've also designed vertical stylescapes. The reason why most stylescapes are horizontal is to make it easier to print it out, lay it out on the table and present it to the client on an in-person meeting. However, most of my clients are overseas and I know that they're looking at the creative direction on their screen, on their phone, on their iPad, or on their computer. So create whatever works best for you and the client. The most important thing to remember is that a stylescape has lots of different elements that create a good visual representation of what the creative direction for the brand is going to look like. So a stylescape would have color suggestions, font suggestions, maybe you already shows a type hierarchy and you can show how it's going to look like on the website, images, patterns, client avatar to really help humanize the brand, collateral examples, digital applications, etc. The purpose really is to create a visual aesthetic that could then be carried on in producing the visual identity. So now let's look at the three different stylescapes I created for this client. What I would love for you to do is to look at the stylescapes and try to guess 
which one did the client ended up going for. One thing that you need to know before you make that choice is that Badass Rebellion is a business run by three female psychologists and they work with middle-aged women to help them through midlife. Their motto is that midlife is not the end, it's only the beginning of a beautiful life ahead. So now that you know the target audience for this brand, which of these directions, which of these styles case do you think the client chose to then translate into their visual identity? Keep that number in mind because what I want you to do is at the end of the video, when you see the reveal, <laughs> to leave a comment and let me know whether or not you guessed right, but no cheating, all right? So was it Stylescape number one, number two, or number three? Now let's look at Stylescape number one. So with this one, we went for very modern, very hip, very cool looking um, creative direction. One thing I knew before I started designing those Stylescapes is that the client wanted a very vibrant looking brand. They wanted vibrant colors with a little bit of sass. So this translated into all three of the creative directions, but they still have a very different look and personality to each of them. This first stylescape, as I said, is very modern, it's very hip, and I wanted to play around with the idea that even though our target audience is a little bit older, we can create a very young looking brand inspired a lot by the modern tech startups. We see those colors often in that industry or female owned communities uh, to try and balance it out. So this creative direction is very inspired and driven by typography. Typography plays a big role in this creative direction, uh, but I also wanted to balance out the clean typography and add a little bit of imperfection to it with handwritten, hand-drawn elements. So you can see it here, for example, we have little hand-drawn elements to, as I said, add this idea of imperfection. Because one thing that my client helps their clients with is to feel imperfectly perfect, right? And I wanted their brand to translate that as well with hand-drawn elements. So in this stylescape, we have a color palette, we have font suggestions. I also wanted to show them how those fonts could translate to their website, what their call to actions could look like, that we can highlight certain elements in their text as well. We also have those curved lines here that were actually inspired from the mood board that we saw earlier. I wanted to show them how we can play with typography again to create a logo. Then I show them an example of a pattern, then how this could be applied to their social media assets, an example of a decorative element for the pictures on the website. And you can see throughout, we have those hand-drawn elements that just add a little bit of personality to the brand. And as I said, adds this little touch of imperfection to, to an otherwise very clean looking brand. So that's for creative direction number one, for stylescape number one. With stylescape number two, I wanted to go a little bit in a different direction, in a retro direction, but not retro to the point where it feels old school, just retro enough to feel fun and inspiring. We also have a very different color palette here and the blue acts as a grounding color. Badass Rebellion, although they are very sassy, they're full of personality, they're also here to support their clients and they have this very grounding nature to them. So this is exactly what this color, the role that this color plays in this creative direction. Without it, the brand would feel very loud and very in your face and probably a little bit too much for what we're trying to accomplish here. So you can see how the blue actually acts in the brand, how it's incorporated into their call to action. And we're not going for a very bright blue here. We specifically chose a very calming blue that plays well with the other colors. Other important elements in this creative direction are those stickers that you can see here and right here as well. This is the retro element that I told you about. I thought it would be fun for this creative direction, for this stylescape to actually create a series of branded stickers that the client could use on their social media, on their website, but also in person with their clients for their events and their live workshop. It's something that they can send to clients and something that is just a little fun element to the brand. So we have some stickers here and then we also have these banners 
uh, here that I thought could be fun to replicate on their website as well as announcement bars or something like that. So what I wanted the stylescape to reflect is power, it's energy, it's fun, but at the same time, it's support and groundness. And finally, with the third stylescape, we have a very different personality once again. We're introducing a completely different color palette that focuses a lot on the greens. We use very rounded shapes again. Even the call to action buttons have those very rounded colors corners, but you can see that typography still plays a, an important role in this creative direction, but the general feel of the brand is very different. It's very happy. It's very lively. It kind of feels like a big belly laugh. You know, it feels like a breath of fresh air. It's much lighter. It doesn't have the sassy, the same sassy element, but it has this very uh, supportive, reassuring side to it. So we, as I said, we're going with a different color palette here. You can see that the typography is very clean and more rounded. So if you look at the typography form stylescape number two, for example, even though it's a sans serif, it's quite a heavy sans serif to really show all that power and personality that this creative direction has. Whereas in this case, we're going for a very rounded, font that feels just very light and very flowy. Another big part of this creative direction are color blocks and big rounded shapes that we can use as part of their, uh, of their brand. In general, what I wanted this creative direction to feel like is to feel very safe, very approachable, very light, with the hope that this inspires the client's target audience to feel the same through the work that my client does. So there you go. These are the three stylescapes I created for the client. Now, at this point, the goal for myself and the client is to choose the creative direction that we want to pursue. It doesn't mean that I'm going to jump straight into designing. Sometimes we still need to refine some elements, maybe work on the color palette a little bit more, um, look for some more inspiration. So it's really a collaborative process with the client to get just the right creative direction before I start designing. So as promised, I'm going to tell you which creative direction the client ended up choosing and how did we translate that into the visual identity and the website. But before that, once again, look at these stylescapes and try to guess which one did the client choose. And then in the comments, let me know if you guessed right. The client ended up going with stylescape number too. They personally love the look and feel of this creative direction, but they also thought that their target audience will feel very connected to it as well. They love the idea of the stickers. They love the blue color to balance out the pinks. And in general, this really felt like, like them. Now let's see how that creative direction actually translated into visual identity and their website. So this is their final brand board and you can see their final logo here at the bottom, their submark, a roundel here with their tagline from dead last to badass. You can see the different stickers we created together. We ended up creating some more as well as some hand-drawn illustrations as well. And also just a little artwork of their tagline uh, again here at the bottom. And this is how we translated the visual identity to their website. So they had quite a lot of written content, which meant that we had to be careful with how we actually designed the website to ensure that it's easy to read and easy to digest. The brand has very vibrant colors, which we have to be careful with so it doesn't feel overwhelming. So our goal was to create a very airy and very light site, but still include all of the brand elements and still have that sassy, badass personality that we're going for. So you'll see some familiar things here. For example, the header font is the font that I suggested in the stylescape, so we brought it over, but we also added an additional handwritten style font to add to that badass, uh, rebel, sassy personality that the brand has. I also sprinkle their brand asset throughout the page just so it looks a little bit funkier, a little bit more interesting. And you will find that those banners, we also brought them over from the stylescape because the client really enjoyed it. 
And finally, as you scroll down, you'll also find how we apply the stickers. So here, for example, we use them for custom check marks, but here at the bottom, we just added them as additional decorative elements on the site. So as I said, stylescapes are great to help the client visualize their brand and get a better feel for it before you start designing. Personally, it really helped me reduce revision requests and ensure that I deliver a very strong and in-depth concept following the one concept method based on the client preferences. So are you using stylescapes in your design process or maybe that's something you can see considering doing. In any case, share your thoughts in the comments and check out our brand mastery course to become an even better brand designer. The link is under this video and I will see you in the next one.